you need to learn AWS right now. So if you're in IT, you must learn the cloud. And AWS is the biggest, largest player out there. Why do you need this? I'm gonna cover this later. In this video, I'm not gonna waste time. I'm gonna demonstrate how easy it is to create an AWS free tier account also and set some billing alerts. Here's why you need to learn AWS right now. Basically, it's a someone else's computer. That's cloud, right? And Amazon has tons and tons of computers, data centers running all across the globe. So if AWS says, if you wanna use our servers, so be it. And a ton of companies actually are currently doing it. So instead of buying your own servers, you're actually hundreds and thousands of dollars saving by renting Amazon servers, right? So companies are shifting their IT infrastructure from in-house to the cloud. So Amazon has endless resources and services, and it's a huge company. So instead of spending all this money on your own servers, you use Amazon. Plus they have a ton of cool features in the cloud that you would not have in your own data center. More and more companies are using and moving to the cloud, and that's why they need you. They need skilled IT individuals who know AWS to help move their stuff to the cloud itself. And once it's there, you need to manage it also, right? And that's the hottest IT skill you can get right now. And don't take my word for it. There are several articles that I'm gonna provide. Take a look at those. Take a look at the top technology trends that I posted in the earlier video. Go check that out also. That'll give you an idea of how fast and exponentially this particular industry is growing and a shortage of skilled individuals, especially with Amazon. Other articles like you know Global Knowledge Services or Gartner Report, Amazon is always at the top. So of course, just like anything else, demand and supply, right? So there's a huge demand of engineers, site reliability engineers, DevOps engineers, cloud architects, entry level, associate level, or even experts, okay? Difficult to find. Two certifications that are important. First is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. This is an entry level, fresh new to cloud, right? So if you don't know anything about the cloud, new to IT, this will be a great start for you. You get to learn all the different services within Amazon, okay? The next level is AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, right? It's a mouthful. But that's a foot in the door as you grow your skill set more, leading to a cloud engineer or network engineer position. So if you want to get the certification, I released a course, check that out, and of course updated the course for 2021 and moving forward, regularly course updates. So you can kind of take a look at it. So the best way to get into this is how. Get your hands dirty, do hands on, right? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna demonstrate how to create an AWS account, right? As well as create some billing alerts and maybe spinning up an instance, okay? So all of this is in a short amount of time. I'm gonna demonstrate so you can actually see in action and then of course practice as you do it yourself, right? With a 12 month free tier access that Amazon provides and anyone can sign up for that free tier. So it's free training, guys from Amazon, right? So they're actually giving their infrastructure to you absolutely free for one year. So go check that out. I'm gonna provide a link in the description so you can see what's all involved in the free tier account also, okay? Now I'm not promoting AWS. I'm just saying it's good for beginner level students to get into AWS using the free tier account. So let's jump in the tutorial, take a look at this. And if you haven't subscribed so far, make sure you subscribe, like, if you like this video so far, and of course, hit the bell notification so you get current and as soon as we post videos, we regularly do this every single day with courses, tutorials, and latest trends in technology. So you get updated and keep your skill set up to date. So without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an AWS free tier account so that you can actually start practicing and jumping into the cloud itself. So all you need to do is just navigate to the URL aws.amazon.com forward slash free and this is going to take you to this page or you can of course do a Google search and you'll get here. Once you're here just click on create a free tier account. Before I actually do this if you scroll down it just tells you a little bit more information about what types of offers. For example it's always free, it's 12 months free and then the trials. And then on the bottom here is important because now it's going to tell you what exactly is covered within the free tier account. 
So you'll have the Amazon EC2 instance of 750 hours. You'll have the S3 bucket of 5 gigabytes. And of course, the database RDS 750 hours. So I would encourage you to kind of go through these, all of these services that are provided as part of the free tier plan before you actually create the account, just so that you know exactly what you're getting into. All right, so all you need to do next is just create a free tier account. Click on this button. It'll walk you through the sign up process. It is a fairly straightforward process. The only caveat is that you need your credit card because without that, you will not be able to create the free tier account. So just fill out the email address, password, and confirm the password. Give it an AWS account name, and you can choose a name. Anything that you like, you can change this name afterwards under the settings option. And then once you do this, just click continue, and it's gonna walk you through putting the account. It's really that simple. So go ahead as a homework or practice exercise, create this free tier account. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below so I know exactly what you're looking at and I can answer those. Perfect. Let's move to the next step where I'm actually going to show you the management console quickly of Amazon because I already have an account here. And let's see if I can create or log in to the AWS management console. So the management console actually provides you the ability to log in and then use your account once you've already set up the account. So I can click on log back in. So I use this. And this is going to take me to the sign in screen. I'm going to log in as a root user. Click next. Of course, give it a password. And then it's going to sign me into the console. So the AWS Management Console is great. Now I'm actually on the cloud. I'm using. Amazon Management Console, and I will see all of these services that Amazon provides that I can use based on my project requirements or the company that I'm working for. Okay, so of course, I have all these courses. So, if you are intending to take the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam, that exam or that certification basically covers all of these services so just that you know exactly what each of these services do. Okay. And then once you dive deeper into these services, for example, wanting to pursue the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification, then you need to, of course, start to work with it. For example, create EC2 instances, you know, set up virtual private clouds, load balancers, you know, architecting a solution, and so on. So that's more in depth. But go check out the courses that I have at claydesk.com just so that you know the exactly career path of where you want to be. So that's really what it takes to create a free tier account and then log in and view the AWS Management Console. Notice you have the EC2 instance here under Compute Services. This is the virtual server. So as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a physical server or companies are moving from their physical infrastructure to the cloud. This EC2 is an example of a virtual server in the cloud. So if I click on EC2 instance, for example, this is going to take me to the dashboard of AWS EC2 and shows me whether I have any instances running or not. So if I were to click on instances here, I'm able to now create and launch a new instance. So if I were to click on launch instances, it's going to just walk me through the steps. Step one, choosing an Amazon machine image, which is a predefined, pre-configured server. Okay. And I can choose from any one of these lists, depending on my own project requirement. And then once I select it, it's going to walk me through the steps and eventually it's going to give me the server. So go ahead, practice with this. Take a look at create one of these images. You can always cancel and exit, by the way, if you don't want to. But once you've configured an instance, it is going to show up here and say instance running. And once we have the virtual server, of course, then you can run applications, you can do whatever it is that you wish to do. So just a quick example of creating a free tour account and then 
logging in doing your AWS management. So you just set up a cloud account in AWS. That's amazing. Not only that, you also set up a virtual server, right, with AWS. So this is step one, getting used to it. And you notice I kind of went quick maybe on certain parts, but it gives you a flavor of what's all involved. So you will learn that stuff. So if you're able to do this, set up an AWS account, do some hands-on, and you keep doing, going down this path, right, moving forward in your career, get AWS certified, you'll be in great shape. And not only that, check out the entry-level interview and questions that I've you know, also posted recently in the next video or the, the earlier video. Check those questions out so you get a flavor of what recruiters are looking for, what companies are looking for, and what do they ask in terms of you know, a DevOps engineer position, for example. What questions do they ask? Please check out that video also. So this is a great start that I wanted to create this video so you can actually see for yourself hands-on what's it like to jump into the cloud and how easy it is to begin your journey. And then of course, there's a lot more involved, so don't take my word for it. You need to spend some time, you need to learn everything hands-on, also understand the concepts as well. Now, there are many other certifications you can pursue, so go check out the career path at claydesk.com so you can actually see what is the right path for you, whether it's the developer path or the network engineer or sysop or administrator and so on. So of course I'm a big fan of AWS because this is a great platform. I'm also working with Azure which is a Microsoft product and Red Hat Technologies which is great also. But for entry level individuals or students I always recommend jumping into AWS. It's a little more intuitive and easy to work with or get into your actual cloud computing. So if you look at the certifications you'll see a lot of terminology and maybe similarities as well. So understandably, like what are all these, you know, different kinds of certifications, what to pursue? And I've also created another video, go check that out, it'll give you a nice understanding of and breaks down into different categories of different types of certifications and career paths you can pursue. But the idea is that you need to get into AWS right now, okay? AWS is exponentially growing. I'm getting calls, for example, for consulting work and I just don't have time to do all of these jobs. Not only that, my students are actually happy because as they pursue their journey or start their journey, it takes about two to three months, six months, depending on your skill set, your time that you're about to spend. This is great. So it's a great journey to start with. Make sure if you want to change your career, no problem. There are no prerequisites, okay? So anyone can get into this as long as you have the right mindset and you're dedicated and you wish to pursue a career in the IT industry. And that is key, okay? Because you can't just, you know, go in all in for the money because it's a high paying career. To get to that aspect, you need to have the right skill set, okay? So go check out all of these career paths. It'll give you a nice understanding and step-by-step -step career path where you can grow your career and, of course, increase your skills. Another quick tip and a bonus for this lecture is try to get into DevOps, right? So it's an emerging field that I would recommend as you get into your cloud practitioner certification, maybe solutions architect, and then try to move into DevOps, which is, you know, operations and development, and you're basically bridging, you know, the actual uh, framework or culture or the life cycle. So DevOps is more of a like a culture or mindset philosophy where these DevOps engineers are not only technically skilled, but also understand technologies like Lean or Agile, and then actual automating the entire process for software development practices from starting an application, developing an application from scratch, and those are developers' jobs, by the way, all the way to the client end, making the application live. So DevOps is really taking the entire lifecycle management and making sure that your development team is absolutely you know working at their own end and then of course the operation teams handle all the back-end servers scripting and whatnot and they're in sync okay so that's another emerging area as you go through your career path i wanted to highlight this as a bonus because companies are of course looking for these individuals more and more and field is exponentially growing so i hope this helps practice with any of these. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area and I will see you next time.